So, um, now that the audio is uh, synced, we are ready to go. So, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Okay, you know what? Saving that for the ELP video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another epic video by yours truly. I, I, I know, okay? I know it's epic, but you, you, you gotta tone it down. Anyways, I'm trying a new setup uh, right now, you know, where I have a microphone right here. Uh, it's just, you know, to help uh, the audio sounding a lot better. So we'll see how this works. Maybe some other day I'll move over uh, there to the vinyl and record player. But for now, we're just gonna do this. So welcome back everyone to another review by yours truly and in today's episode we're going to be reviewing autobahn by Kraftwerk. now before this video starts we have to pay respects to uh florian schneider uh one of the founding members of Kraftwerk, who sadly died at the age of 73 just a couple of weeks ago in april now already at that point i started planning for a new review and so when he died i figured my next review has to be Kraftwerk. so i headed out to my uh nearest record store uh, and I bought myself a few albums like uh, Computer World, uh, Mad Machine, and in the end, uh, I settled on Autobahn to review. Autobahn is the fourth studio album by Kraftwerk, technically, since Ralph and Florin released three other albums in the span of 1970 to 1973. But in 1974, Kraftwerk expanded from not just Ralph and Florin, but to both Wolfgang and the short lived Klaus, who left the band the next year. And so in 1974, Kraftwerk released Autobahn, which was a fairly critical success, reaching the top 25 on the US charts and all the way up to the top 15 in the UK. I believe it peaked at 11. Uh, it became the international success for Kraftwerk, and it sort of kickstarted the band into the mainstream. So let's take a closer look at Autobahn by Kraftwerk. We're gonna have to position this like... Le Aut Autobahn... Autobahn. Great. The first thing you'll notice is the album cover, of course. However, on original pressings, this uh, album cover was actually different. In reality, the album cover looks like this which you actually get with this album, and it's just the inner sleeve. This album cover is painted by Emil Schult, uh, a longtime collaborator for both Ralph and Florin. However, this artwork wasn't actually used for the album cover, and so when the remaster came, it was just re replaced by the Autobahn sign or the motorway sign in Germany. Also, one thing you get from all the Kraftwerk albums is a photo album. The picture book also has the same sign, and it also includes a couple of images from when you're driving on the Autobahn, like this, but also the lyrics, which you can see here. Uh, I can... Right? Do I German? Please help. Oh yes, the classic. I can say that shit, I can say that. Kling klang, kling klang, kling klang studios, kling klang, kling klang, kling klang studios. Ah yes, we're fan of the of you know I give up. On the back side of the cover, you actually get all four members of the band driving in a car, uh, which was also on the original pressings, I believe. Anyways, so that's an added bonus, which I really like. Now, the big thing that everyone would like to talk about is obviously the title track, Autobahn. It is a 22 minute and 47 seconds of pure creative genius. It is truly one of the most unique things I've ever heard. Now, like I said earlier in the video, the song got a fair bit of commercial success in both the UK and the US. However, that was an edited version of the song, which was barely four minutes, which is a bit criminal since you should really listen to the entire thing and not some edited version, but that's just my opinion. Now, the song is famous for both its runtime, but also what the song represents. It is just driving on the motorway slash Autobahn. And the song does this perfectly and beautifully. It uses pretty much every synth noise you can imagine, creating both the atmosphere and character of the song, which is highly unique, creative, 
you name it. But overall, it's super good, it's super amazing, and I really love it. The midsection shows the capabilities perfectly, imitating cars passing by you as you're driving down the motorway. kind of fucking hot i'm not gonna lie it's like 30 degrees outside bro and goddamn summer and of course who can forget the vocals sung in german by both florin and ralph <laughs> Not only is this song amazing, but as a lot of people have said, it is very important to the evolution of electronical music, which I think it really is. This also goes for the entirety of Kraftwerk and not just Audubon, uh, but their other albums released as well. I mean, Ralph and Florin had to build their own instruments to use in their music. If that isn't both unique, creative, and ahead of its time, I don't know what is. And all of this combines perfectly on Audubon. However, 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 I'm talking about Audubon, the song, not the album. And that is where the cracks start to open. For a while now, I've been, you know, talking about the title track Audubon, but the B side of the album is where I have some issues. Now, from what I gathered, it seems the B side represents driving at night and then waking up for a morning walk on the last song. <sighs> Morgen Spitzergang. Morgen Spaziergang. Morgen. Morgen Spaziergang. Morgen Spaziergang. Which translates to morning walk. Now the problem is that the B-side really isn't all that good. Kometen Melody in 1 and 2 are just a mishmash of drumming and synth with no particular pattern, unlike Audubon, which just made it seem too random. And I dislike that. A bit of the same thing with Mitchton. Mitternacht, which translates to midnight. It's just not that special or good. There are no vocals in any of the tracks as well, which is a bit of a disappointment. And one of the only good things I can say about it is the flute playing on Morning Walk. But, I mean, even then, if I wanted flute, I would just put on Jethro Tull. All in all, the B-side just feels a bit bland and boring, to be honest. And this is very sad, considering the title track, Audubon, is easily one of the best songs I've ever heard. In conclusion, the title track, Audubon, is one of the best songs I've ever heard, but the album, Audubon, falls short because of the B-side, in my opinion. I know a lot of people actually like or love the B-side for Audubon and, you know, how it continues on driving through the night and, how, you know, that whole concept, but I didn't. And sadly, for that reason, I'm giving the album a 6 out of 10. Really great album, but it falls a little too short. And uh, that is very, very sad, uh, but it's my opinion and I, I, uh, there's nothing more to say. And with that said... I just wanted to say goodbye to Schneider one last time. He was truly a genius in music along with Ralph and the other members that went in and out of Kraftwerk. And it's very sad to see him go. So rest in peace, Florin. Uh, and with that said, we're at the end of this video. Goodbye, everyone. See you next time. The hook of the song, funny enough, is probably the, ac the vocals, actually. Because the Wir fan 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 is such an iconic phrase, to be honest. At least from the album and the song standpoint. You know, I don't probably go up and ask someone. <laughs> Do you know we're fan 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 of the out? Yeah, it wouldn't work. But iconic for Kraftwerk nonetheless.